All right. Morning, everyone. And uh, welcome to today's webinar, How to Win Residential Storage Jobs with Generac PowerCell. I'm Aaron Bingham, a product manager with Baywari. We'll bring up Jeff here from Generac as well. Hey, thank you, Aaron. And thank you, Jessica. Great. Okay. Um, so we're going to be learning how to win residential storage jobs with Generac's PowerCell solution. My name is Aaron Bingham. I'm a product manager with Baywari Solar Systems here in the U.S. And very excited to be joined by Jeff McAndrews from Generac Clean Energy Solutions. Um, we're going to run through how to become a uh, Generac certified power partner and going to be running through the PowerCell Clean Energy uh, Residential Storage Solution. So without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and pass it off to Jeff McAndrews. Thank you so much, Aaron. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Presentation should last about 45 minutes and we will have time for Q&A. As Aaron had mentioned, my name is Jeff McAndrew. I'm the Director of Sales for the Eastern Half of North America for Generac Clean Energy Solutions. And my contact information is right up here on the screen. So if you need anything and you're interested in <clears throat> moving forward with becoming a power partner, don't hesitate to reach out to me directly, even if you're in California, Arizona, that's fine. Uh, I have a sales director that covers the Western portion of the US and Hawaii. So uh, if you'd like, you can reach out to me and then I'll connect you to that team and we can walk you through the certification process. As Eric mentioned, we are gonna have time for a Q&A at the end of the presentation. So if you could just hold your questions, feel free to put them in the chat box and then we will uh, we'll address as many as we can in the time allotted. All right, well, let's get started. Folks, the first thing I'm going to touch on before we get into PowerCell is just what a relationship with Generac looks like from the clean energy perspective. Now, most of you likely know who Generac is. We're a $2.2 billion organization as of last year. We're U.S. based out of Waukesha, Wisconsin. We've been in business for over 60 years. We've got about 70 plus percent market share of residential home standby. So we're backing up over 2.2 million homes throughout North America, that number is going up significantly. It's going up every single day. We're shipping about a thousand generators a day at this point. We do have a diversified residential portfolio of, of, of power offerings. So we don't just make home standby generators, the power cell energy storage platform. We also make products like tow behind mowers and leaf blowers and solar powered light towers for, uh, for construction projects. So we're a well diversified company. We've been in business for a long time. We're planning to be in business for a long time. We're publicly traded. Uh, all of our financials are available to both you and the end user online. So you'll see that we've got a strong balance sheet. What I'm emphasizing here, guys, is just we're an experienced market leader. We've built markets in the past and we're looking forward to building this one with you. We do have 600 plus engineers who are dedicated just to product quality and, and innovation leadership. We have access to UL certified laboratories within our own headquarters. So our engineers are constantly designing, building, and testing new products um, that, we, that we bring to market on a pretty regular basis. You've probably noticed even since the launch of PowerCell back in December that we've already brought new products to market uh, within this product line on the home standby side. We just launched a 24 kilowatt generator, which is the largest in the industry by 4KW. So we are, we are dedicated to product and market leadership. But we're also dedicated to market development. What some of our power partners enjoy is the fact that Generac does national marketing campaigns. And with that, we are advertising on, on television, digital, social, through streaming. And, and that includes you know, CNN, ESPN, NBC, CNN, BC, Fox Networks. Homeowners are calling Generac every single day asking to learn more about the PowerCell platform. And what we do is we book those appointments with our power partners. And then the power partners take that appointment, they run with it, they try to close the deal with the homeowner. Last week alone, we generated over 900 in-home consultations. About a month before that, it was regular for us to be doing about five to 600 in-home consultations. Like I said, last week we were over 900. So uh, the marketing is continuing to improve. Our qualification of these leads is continuing to improve. We just brought a, a whole team in-house. We're investing in internal heads to Take the, take the phone calls from these homeowners and, and essentially qualify them. Qualify the homeowner, qualify the house, and then send that lead to our uh, power partners. In order to take advantage of that program, you do have to be certified and you need to become a power partner. 
And once you become a power partner, we provide you with a number of tools, the first of which is Power Play Clean Energy, which is an end-to-end -end design platform that includes Near Map, Eagle View, Google Maps, Bing, uh, proposal tools, built-in financing. So if you're a partner of, of Loan Pal or Mosaic or, or Dividend, you can actually qualify homeowners for financing within the tool itself. Comprehensive proposal tool that includes that financing. Uh, you can send proposals from this tool. You can customize proposals, uh, put together all of your pricing and even get a signed contract. We also provide our installers with fleet monitoring. This is important because remember, we are the energy storage portion of this as well. So for a lot of our installers who were previously installing Tesla Powerwalls, this has been a pain point of theirs where they didn't previously have a way of monitoring anything but the PV. So if they were installing Enphase or SolarEdge with Tesla, they could monitor the Enphase and SolarEdge, but they had no way of checking on the customer's power walls. So unless the customer was, you know, uh, unless they were sharing the, the end user's dashboard with the installer, they didn't really have any way of proactively monitoring those sites. And if there was a problem, oftentimes they didn't know it until the grid went down. Well, with proactive fleet monitoring, you guys understand it, you're accustomed to this. You're able to see all of your sites, what's connected, what's disconnected, how your sites are performing based on how you expected them to perform, so on and so forth. This just launched in June. This will include alerts, updates, um, and, and bi-directional controls in the future, but as of now, this truly is a, a monitoring dashboard. We are already partnered with the top financiers within the industry, Mosaic Dividend, Sonova, Loan Pal, SunGage Financial, Sunlight Financial. So if you guys are financing projects, which I expect most of you are, uh, there's a really good chance that we're already partnered with, uh, with those financing partners. <clears throat> and if we're not, please reach out to me. It's been a really quick approval process to, um, to move forward with the new partner. So steps on partnering with Generac, number one, attend a certification training. Certification training is an eight hour course. Uh, as of now, it's web-based and it will cover sales codes, installation and commissioning, as well as the PowerPlay Clean Energy tool. Once you've attended the certification training, you'll be, um, you'll be signing up for the PowerPlay Clean Energy tool, which will then give you access to those, uh, to the leads and the end-to-end -end, uh, design platform. Now, through the end of the year, we have a program called the Buy and Try Campaign, where if you have not installed and registered your first Generac power cell yet, you can take advantage of this program after you register your first power cell, we'll send you a $600 rebate, but we'll also give you a free year of power play clean energy, which is a $400 value. So just to summarize, when you partner with Generac, you're partnering with a reliable and experienced partner. Again, you know, the, the two figures that come to mind are 60 years. We've been in business for over 60 years and we're backing up over 2.2 million homes in North America. That is, uh, if you compare 2.2 million homes to the number of homes that actually have residential solar installed, 2.2 is not far off, right? Like Generac as an organization has almost as many customers as the entire residential PV industry combined. So large organization, we built the processes to make sure that we can support you, our partners and installers, as well as those homeowners. You'd, get advantage, uh, you'd be able to take advantage of that market development. Again, that's national. This is not just a California thing. Um, markets where we're generating the most leads is pretty widespread, but Florida, Texas, the Southeast Coast, um, New York, New Jersey, uh, through the Midwest, of course, California. Um, but we're generating leads everywhere. This isn't just uh, one specific market where we're passing those out. We'll give you guys the tools you need to succeed. Power Fleet, Power Play Clean Energy, a gen service account where you guys um, can utilize that to, to stock service parts if you ever needed to. And then lastly, you'd be able to leverage the fact that you're partnered with a trusted and well-known household brand. Not a lot of homeowners know Enphase or SolarEdge um, or, or really many of the other manufacturers within this industry outside of like Panasonic and LG. So there may be a few others, but you know, homeowners know who Generac is. Like I said, we're, we're almost 75% market share in home standby and they recognize the Generac name. Most folks know we're a US based company right out of Waukesha, Wisconsin, uh, and they trust our brand. So I understand that you know, most folks in this industry already have a pretty good grasp on energy storage. Um, data shows that about 70% of companies are offering energy storage. I'm just gonna do a high level explanation on how batteries work and what you should look for when you're considering a partner. 
Uh, but before we look at that, let's just quickly explore the, that exponential adoption of energy storage. It's been driven by reduced cost of batteries, which has been driven by economies of scale through the EV market. Batteries are becoming more powerful and therefore more useful. Utilities are either responding in a positive or negative way to energy storage, but candidly, both of those responses are, are driving demand. <clears throat> in California, where we're seeing time of use, that's what I would, I would refer to as a, 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 negative, uh, a negative response to, to solar and energy storage. Utilities are implementing time of use plans. Well, time of use is great for energy storage because you could store energy from the sun in the morning when net metering credits are, are you know, average or relatively low, and then we could discharge that battery capacity to the house during time of use. That's how, we, that's how we adapt to the negative response. There are some utilities that have a really positive response to energy storage and solar. They're looking at solar and energy storage in terms of how it can help them sustain their business and actually save them money. And a good example of that would be connected solutions programs uh, with Eversource and National Grid in Mass, Rhode Island, Connecticut, and Vermont, where homeowners are actually able to enter into an agreement with the utility and make money by selling battery capacity back to those utilities. Lastly, you know, brands like Generac are doing uh, end user marketing through social media, digital streaming, national television advertising. And because of that, homeowners are just generally more aware of energy storage and they know to, to ask for it. So let's look at batteries briefly. <clears throat> All batteries, whether you're an AC coupled battery or a DC coupled battery, at some point charge from DC power. They store that power as usable capacity or kilowatt hours. And then they discharge that power as DC. And then an inverter somewhere takes that DC power, inverts it to AC and sends that power to the house. You can charge batteries from solar, which is the most well-known. You can charge batteries from the grid where it's permitted. And in our case, come October, you'll be able to charge the batteries from a generator. Be on the lookout for a whole launch from, generator, uh, from Generac regarding generator integration. The things you want to look for when you're considering a battery, uh, just from charging attributes, how fast can it charge? How efficiently does it charge? How big is the battery and how expandable is it? The reason that we, we're going to talk to you guys about some of these attributes is that some folks look at just the kilowatt hour capacity of the battery, they divide it by the cost of the battery and they say, it's $500 a kilowatt hour, that's what my customer needs, that's a cheap price. It's just not that simple. There's so many other factors to look at from, you know, how quickly does it charge? How much power does it discharge? How efficient is the battery when you charge and discharge it? What can the battery be discharged for? Everybody knows batteries are really about backup power, but additionally, can it be used in a market like Hawaii to help homeowners almost zero out their utility bill? Uh, can it be used in California for rate arbitrage? Is it realistic to use this battery for rate arbitrage? And can the battery be utilized in virtual power plant programs to sell power back to the utility? How flexible is the battery? How many of those modes are available on that energy storage platform. How efficiently does it discharge the battery? How powerful is that battery? Something that I've started talking about is like the power per kilowatt hour. So some batteries are high capacity, like, uh, like a, a Tesla Powerwall is 13 and a half usable kilowatt hours, but it only pushes five kilowatts continuously. It's not a lot of continuous power per kilowatt hour. So how powerful is the battery and then how long will that battery run? Okay. With that as a high level overview, let's get into the power cell itself. This is a fully integrated ecosystem of products. So when you sell the power cell to a homeowner, when a homeowner says, hey, um, hey, Aaron Solar, I'm interested in energy storage, instead of selling them end phase with another battery, when you're selling power cell, you're gonna offer them the end-to-end -end Generac solution, which homeowners will identify with. Homeowners appreciate the fact that the Generac power cell is a single source platform. All of our components were built to work together. You're not utilizing a third party battery manufacturer with our inverter, with some you know, third party company's optimizers, with you know, another company's load management control center. Uh, this is all Generac through and through and homeowners take uh, a lot of relief in knowing that. So again, all these components were designed to work together. So it's true plug and play. All of our devices connect on a 380 volt DC bus uh, a bus just being a series of conductors that transmits power and data. So our PV links communicate to our inverter over the power line, our battery communicates to the inverter over the power line. All of these devices are communicating together to, to basically decide how much power, where power is flowing and how much is going to the home at any given point in time. 
Generac even manufactures these transfer switches for whole house disconnect. Um, to be clear, Generac as an org, we, we ship like over 600,000 transfer switches a year. So launching the PowerCell ATS was really no, no big feat for us. Um, and then even load management is all by Generac. And that's a product that we've been shipping for uh, five or six years at this point. You can optimally size this system based on what the homeowner needs. The, the battery size is decoupled from the PV array size and you can size the battery in just about three kilowatt hour increments. So if you're in California and your homeowner needs 12 kilowatt hours to get through time of use, but they have a nine kilowatt PV array. Well, in, in the days of AC coupled batteries or like Tesla, for example, you'd pretty much be looking at two power walls because you've got a nine KW PV array and their instruction is to, you know, every six or seven KW have a second power wall. But that homeowner really only needs 12 kilowatt hours to get from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. in San Diego. So you're gonna sell them, you got an option where with PowerCell you can right size that system, give them 12 kilowatt hours of the nine kilowatt PV array and they can upgrade that capacity in the future if they decide they want more capacity for backup power. Or you can sell them 27 kilowatt hours of capacity because that's what that solution requires. And we'll be making a lot of, uh, as you guys have probably already noticed, I'll be making a lot of comparisons to competitive products. I have tremendous respect for all of my competitors, including Tesla, Solar, Gen Phase. They're all great companies, um, but I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't put out or show you guys the, the big differences between their platform and ours. So we'll pick apart this solution a little bit one by one. The power cell inverter is a single inverter that manages solar plus storage. This is a hybrid inverter. Solar and battery both connect on a DC distribution panel inside the inverter. This inverter offers more operating modes than really any of our competition from charging it from the sun, charging it from the grid, uh, self-supply, zero export, power limiting, RAID arbitrage, uh, selling, so the ability to just push battery capacity back to the utility if it's allowed, demand charge reduction. We have all of these different operational modes that are included with every inverter. But the inverter is really optimized for backup power, and we'll get into that in a bit. We have two flavors of inverter. We've got a 7.6 kilowatt residential split phase inverter, and we have an 11.4 kilowatt three phase inverter, which is a really niche product for light commercial applications. Think banks, doctor's offices, law offices, architectural firms, these businesses that have 208 volt power but really only utilize 120, 240 volt loads. They can utilize that inverter for backup power, they can utilize it for, for demand reduction, self-supply, so on and so forth. So the residential inverter is really going to be the, the bread and butter here that's like 90% of what we sell is this residential inverter. Built into this inverter, we have a, a integrated automatic transfer switch rated for 50 amps at 240 volts. So 12,000 watts of surge power is available through this inverter. And because we have a built-in transfer switch, you can use the inverter for sub-panel backup. Let's say you sell the homeowner uh, essential loads backup power. You can, you can use this for sub-panel backup power without needing to buy the separate transfer switch. But you could also utilize an external transfer switch for, for whole house disconnect or whole home backup. When the grid goes down, the inverter can push 9,000 watts continuous power to a backup load center to the main panel, assuming you have a fully loaded battery cabinet or sunshine. Um, if you have more solar available or a second battery cabinet, you could actually push 11,000 watts continuously. The surge capability through the inverter is 50 amps. Inverter can be installed indoors, outdoors, it includes consumption monitoring, so homeowners can actually see how much they're consuming as opposed to just how much they're producing. And um, there is a screen on the inverter for, you know, for those of you who, who have elderly clients, we, we do have a lot of customers who are either elderly or less tech savvy who aren't util utilizing mobile apps or smartphones. They really appreciate the fact that if they know a storm is coming, they can go into their garage, look at the inverter and see that the battery is fully charged. They can see how much power they're producing. And then finally, uh, as of today, the inverter has a 10 year warranty, but in the coming weeks, we're expecting to launch uh, an extended warranty for uh, 15, 20 or 25 years. So looking at the battery, this is a modular storage solution. Within a single cabinet, you can put anywhere between three and six battery modules. Three battery modules today would be 8.6 kilowatt hours, six would be 17.1. Coming in October, we will be shipping three kilowatt hour battery modules. Um, I can't guarantee exactly what date in October, but at some point in October, 
these Panasonic battery modules are going to be upgraded to three kilowatt hours, and that's what we'll be shipping. So you'll actually be at 9, 12, 15, and 18 kilowatt hours of usable capacity for the same price. As you add battery capacity, you are also getting not just like longer duration backup power, but you're also getting um, more continuous power output and more, uh, more peak motor starting current. So you guys will notice that on that power cell 17, on the 17 kilowatt hour battery, this is our flagship battery. You are actually able to max out the 50 amp surge on the inverter with this battery and it can push 9 kW. So what I think is interesting is a lot of installers, again, who who'd previously been selling Tesla and are selling power cell now, I used to always ask like, what is the average number of power walls that you guys sold on a project? And they'd say like 1.5, which sounds weird, but you know, they're either going with one or two and most of them would probably land somewhere in between if there was a better price point. Well, that is this battery uh, in the sense that 18 kilowatt hours is roughly between one and two power walls, but it gives you the power output of, it basically gives you the power output of two power walls. And we can combine that with load management. So you are going to be able to give your customers a more cost-effective whole home backup power solution by offering this. And we'll get into that in just a moment. The power zone is our rooftop optimization and rapid shutdown. We've developed a, a device called the PV link that allows us to optimize array production while mitigating the effects of shading. So if for example on, uh, if for example on power zone one, we had shading over this one panel, you would still be able to make max production out of the other six panels. Bypass diodes and maximum power point tracking allow us to make production, make it build as much energy as we would otherwise be able to from these other six panels. So what we're doing here, guys, we're, we're reducing the potential failure points on the roof while still maximizing the amount of energy that can be produced. All of our rooftop hardware has a 25 year warranty standard with the industry. The power cell transfer switch, which we just launched the last week and is shipping now, enables whole home backup power. So in the event that you wanna offer a homeowner whole house disconnect, you would sell them this 200 amp transfer switch or in markets like Puerto Rico or Hawaii, you may utilize the 100 amp transfer switch. We have a 100 amp service rated and a 200 amp service rated. And the transfer switch allows us to pass through power to the entire main service panel. Built into this transfer switch is um, uh, a board that we call the SACM. It's a smart air conditioning module board where you can actually do load management for up to four HVAC circuits by interrupting the thermostat control wires. So you combine the 50 amp surge through the inverter in a single power cell 17 with the whole house transfer switch and now our smart management modules. These smart management modules we launched back in I think 2014 or 2015, they allow us to stagger the startup of large loads so that you don't have to be as concerned about a 30 amp well pump and a 30 amp water heater turning on at the same time. Look, if you had a, a, a 30 amp, let's say you had a 10 amp base load and a 30 amp well pump, a 30 amp water heater, and maybe a 15 amp sump pump, you would be concerned about an 85 amp peak. With this same system, with an 85 amp peak, you would be required to sell three Tesla power walls to meet this amount of power, or you'd have to basically not connect the well pump per code. With smart management modules, if the house starts to consume more power than the inverter can push, these devices will be connected to large 240 volt appliances in the home and they communicate on frequency drop. So if the house starts to pull, let's say this exact scenario happens where the well pump, the water heater and the sump pump all turn on at the same time, we get 85 amp peak. Our SMMs are gonna recognize that frequency drop and then we will temporarily pause the devices with SMMs, power the rest of the house while we're doing it, and then we will bring up those loads one at a time. This is pretty cool because remember, some of you, if you've installed Tesla, you know how this works, so even any other, really any other backup power systems. If, if the, the power of the home starts to exceed the rated output of the batteries, the batteries will shut off and literally disconnect the entire home, which means in a power outage, your home is not being powered your homeowner is probably a little bit surprised and you're getting a call during a storm. Well, with SMMs, what we're going to do is, again, five minutes later, we keep the house running. Five minutes later, we'll turn on priority one. Maybe that's the well pump. 15 seconds after that, we turn on priority two, which is the water heater. And then 15 seconds after that, we'll turn on priority three, which is the, uh, 
um, sump pump in our example. So some folks might say, uh, yeah, but you, you've got a 50 amp surge, which is still like the industry leading in terms of a single inverter. But you know, what, what can I do with the 50 amp surge? Well, with load management, you could do a lot with a 50 amp surge. Here I'm powering basically 85 amps worth of power from a 50 amp surge because through load management, I'm able to stagger when those loads start. You can also use these SMMs as a lockout. So I'm not gonna pretend that we're backing up five ton AC units or even really four ton AC units. If you got a four or five ton AC unit, historically you'd be wiring a non backup loads panel, putting the, the AC units, the electric range, the electric dryer on a non backup load center. Some installers have told us that for, it would take an electrician three to six hours to do that work. Instead of doing that, you could just utilize a 50 amp or 100 amp SMM and set it to lock out. Okay, so when the grid goes down, we shut off that electric dryer, the electric range, and, uh, and keep the rest of the loads running. So recapping on key selling points here, guys, single inverter for solar pool storage, we're reducing failure points, we're gaining higher efficiencies, we're able to take advantage of um, being DC coupled. So in this example, this could be, it's not uncommon for installers to put like 12 kilowatts of solar on an inverter with a power cell 17 because we could send call this seven and a half kilowatts of solar we could send to the main panel while we're sending the other call it 5 kW right into the battery to recharge it so you might only get 7.6 kW on the AC side of this inverter but we're really not limited on the DC side so you can heavily oversize the inverter as needed PV system directly charges the battery with DC, so we're gonna charge faster and more efficiently. You're utilizing significantly fewer power electronics on the roof. Additionally, um, because of that, you're also gonna have fewer connection points, so just fewer opportunities for error. Single batteries capable of, of whole home backup. The battery is flexible, so you can use, you know, you can sell the homeowner the 17 kilowatt hour battery if they say, hey, that's not in my budget, but I still want some backup power. What else do you have? You could say that's no problem. I can, I can offer you, I can pull three battery modules out of this system and give you a power cell nine. And then when you're ready, we can add those battery modules back in and give you more power to the house. Homeowners always ask, um, homeowners will always ask, like, how can I make this more cost effective? Or how could I make this any cheaper? Hoping that you guys are just out of nowhere going to like drop your margin by 10%. But when it comes to batteries, if you have a modular solution and you're leading with the power cell 17, which candidly you'll, you'll sell the most of. And a homeowner says, how can I reduce the price on this? I want backup power, but this is too much money. Say, so, okay, no problem. Why don't we just pull out a couple battery modules? We'll give you essential loads back up. And then when you're ready, we can add those battery modules back in. The beautiful thing for you guys is you get a, a ride on sale after the fact. Um, and I didn't mention it, but you could actually stack a second battery cabinet on this single inverter. Um, in the event that that homeowner, you know, wanted 17 kilowatt hours of storage to start, but then eventually wanted to upgrade to, to potentially like 34 or 36 kilowatt hours of storage. Again, this is truly the industry's first, you know, fully integrated one vendor platform with load management and whole home backup. None of our competitors are offering a load management solution. So we've got installers who, we've got installers who used to sell like Solar Edge optimizers, obviously with your Solar Edge inverter, a Tesla Powerwall, and then a Lumen panel or a Span panel, and they're looking at like three thousand plus dollars for the install of a load management panel. And then the homeowner's got their Solar Edge app, their Tesla app, their Lumen app, and it just becomes a, a much more complicated install. This is one platform built, uh, designed and built by Generac, backed by Generac, um, and with that, all of the support that comes with working with Generac. Homeowners are going to have access to a single mobile application where they're going to monitor second by second data on their PV production. Um, where's that power flowing? Is it going into the battery? Is it going to the house? Is it being absorbed by the house or is it exporting to the grid? They're going to have second by second data that tells them exactly what's happening with their PV array. They'll also have access to historical insights so they can see how much they produced or consumed this month, last month. Um, their battery state of charge. This is cool. When the grid goes down, you know, homeowners are always wondering like, oh shoot, how long is, how long is my battery gonna last when the grid goes down? Which we'll talk about in a minute, but the mobile app will actually tell you based on the, the home's current level of consumption and the battery state of charge, 
hey, basically you've got 10 kilowatt hours in the battery, you're consuming one kW, you've got 10, 10 hours of backup power. Well, if your homeowner starts consuming five kW, it's gonna say you're gonna have two hours of backup power, right? So instead of, instead of you guys getting a call from the homeowner saying, hey, this battery only lasted me two hours, you could train them to look at the app when the grid goes down, check what they're consuming so that they can maximize the use of that battery. We've also got real-time build tracking. So uh, we've all experienced the situation where a homeowner, you install a system based on a homeowner's demand and um, you know, from like the previous year, and then they call you after the first month, they say, hey, I was expecting a, a $0 utility bill or just an interconnection fee. And it turns out they consumed like 25% more energy that, that month after you installed a system because, hey, I have solar now, electricity is free. Um, you could utilize this app to train the homeowner to stay within their budget goals, make sure they're only consuming as much as, um, as you design the system for them to consume. So in more ways than one, this application is going to be a good tool for, for you because you're going to be able to say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner, use the mobile application to see how long your battery is going to last. Track your consumption. Track your, your expected utility bill. We're going to look at power cell applications. Everybody knows this is, you know, we're Generac, right? So this is a backup power application. We are the most cost-effective whole home backup power solution in the market. We also use these batteries for rate arbitrage, demand reduction in markets like Arizona, and utility programs in places like Portland, Oregon, Southern California, and SCE um, in the Northeast. We have utility programs going on in these markets. So if you guys are in uh, Southern California, Edison, please reach out. Um, we have some programs going on there right now. Uh, we've got programs in the Northeast. We have programs in Portland, Oregon. We have conversations with utilities on a daily basis. Virtual power plants, are going to become much more of uh, much more of a regular thing across the country. So exciting for, for energy storage. We discussed this, but again, in terms of backup power, we're gonna be able to back up more of the home because we got a 50 amp surge through a single battery cabinet, 50 amp surge through the inverter, nine, 10 kW continuous, depending on how much PV and battery storage you have. And load management allows us to stagger the startup of those large loads. So grid goes down, we're consuming, you know, 10 amps. And the wall pump and the three-ton AC unit both turn on at the same time. Temporarily pause them, keep the rest of the house running. Five minutes later, bring up that wall pump and then try to start the three-ton AC unit. If you are trying to start a three-ton AC unit, uh, you would be required to utilize a soft starter or a sure start, um, which, which basically reduces the LRA or lock rotor amps of that unit by up to like 60%. So we've started three-ton AC units with a, a one kilowatt base load <clears throat> with a single battery cabinet with a sure start installed. Homeowners are gonna ask, how long is my battery gonna last? The way I would respond to a homeowner is, it depends how big is your battery? What is the state of charge in that battery? How many kilowatt hours do you have? How much power is the home consuming and is the sun shining, okay? Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner, if your battery's got 10 kilowatt hours in it and you're using one kW, you're gonna have 10 hours of backup assuming the sun isn't shining. If you start using five kilowatts, you're gonna have two hours of backup assuming the sun isn't shining. But the sun shining part is really interesting. Look, with our platform, again, we're fully integrated. So the PV links know how much power the house needs. Our PV links can match the demand of the house when the grid is down. So we could keep the battery full and just load follow from the PV links, which is awesome because some of our competitors will basically have to frequency shift off or on the solar inverter when the grid is down. So just as an example, you know, the, the Tesla solution, if more solar energy is being produced than can be consumed by the house or sent to the battery, AKA the sun is shining and the battery's full, there's a good chance you're making more than the house can consume. The power wall has to shut off the PV array, discharge the battery. And I understand that it's only for a certain period of time before it kicks the PV array back on. <clears throat> but if I'm a homeowner, Grid goes down, I open my mobile app and I just spend X number of dollars on two Tesla power walls or a Tesla power wall and my solar is not operating. I could be pretty frustrated about that, right? You could go into the evening without a fully charged battery. Well, in our case, again, we're going to save that battery capacity for when there's not enough solar available to meet the load in the home. Our advantage in markets like California is that we can right size the batteries for rate arbitrage. If you've got a 10 kilowatt PV array, but you only need 10 to 15 kilowatt hours of storage for time of use, 
you can right size the battery and sell them a smaller battery that meets their needs instead of overselling them capacity because of the limitations of the AC coupled battery. Also, we're gonna charge and discharge our batteries faster and more efficiently. In markets like Arizona, where we see demand charges on a residential scale, we can actually tell the inverter, hey, only discharge my battery when uh, my house starts to consume a certain amount of demand. So if you're, if you're in a demand -based, on a demand-based rate plan and your house is consuming uh, 10 kW and you wanna bring it to five, you can tell the inverter, hey, only discharge the battery if there's a power outage or when my house starts to consume 5,000 watts. Virtual power plant programs I just mentioned, if you're in Mass, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Hampshire, Vermont, you have to be taking advantage of these programs. Homeowners can get checks of upwards of like $1,500 to $2,000 a year. And, um, and in, I believe in Massachusetts, they just extended the program to five years. So even if your homeowner is getting $1,000 per year for five years, that's $5,000 of checks. The utility is gonna write to the homeowner that'll compensate for the cost of their battery. Okay, you guys probably feel like I've already gone through power cell versus power wall, but I'm really just getting started. Um, there's, there's, two, there's big differences between these two products and people say, well, how, just give me a chart. How does it compare to power wall? It's, it's bigger than that, guys. Generac's core competency is backup power. This is what we do on a daily basis. We build products to back up homes, businesses, and candidly power plants. Like we've got, we've got situations where we're stacking three one megawatt generators together to back up a small grid. So backup power is what we do. We live for backup power. We also make an, an entire platform. We're not just making a battery, right? With the Powerwall, you know, Tesla is an EV company, right? They're a tech company, very heavily focused on electric vehicles today with a battery division. It's become more apparent than ever right now, now that installers are not getting, some installers are not getting access to Tesla Powerwalls until sometime in Q1, potentially late Q1, but Tesla's focus is not necessarily on the battery, but more so on the cars, right? Our, our focus is on providing backup power. This is what we do. This is what we live for. In terms of performance advantages, given the exact same set of, of systems, the same size PV array and energy storage device, we would back up the house for longer because we produce more energy. We back up more loads in the home with less energy storage because of our 50 amp surge and our load management capabilities. You can right size the batteries and give your homeowners a better price or possibly give them access to financing when they might not have had it previously because you can reduce the price by giving them less energy storage. And we're gonna be able to give that customer a better customer experience. Follow me through this build for one moment. If you got 10 kW on a 7.6 solar edge inverter, you're never charging a Tesla Powerwall with more than the 7.6 kilowatts that have already been inverted and clipped. Whereas we will, if you have 10 kilowatts on our inverter, we could send five to the battery and five through the inverter to power the house, right? Because we're DC coupled, we're gonna take advantage of, of solar power that other, candidly, all AC coupled batteries just won't have access to. Additionally, we're DC coupled. With an AC coupled battery, you're taking DC solar power, inverting it through an inverter, be that solar edge, end phase, SMA, and then the power wall is taking that AC energy, inverting it to DC, inverting it back to AC and sending it to the house. The problem with that is, you know, it takes a kilowatt hour and a half to charge, uh, to charge and discharge a, a 13 and a half kilowatt hour battery. So if you're cycling that battery on a daily basis, you're losing at least a kilowatt hour and a half because of the 90% round trip efficiency, okay? In our case, we're charging the battery directly from DC, so we're gonna be able to do it more efficiently. Round trip efficiency on our battery, is like 96 and a half percent. And then lastly, in the event of a, a grid outage, we're not gonna shut off the PV array under any circumstance. So if the sun is shining, we're gonna make power from the sun with the panels and we're gonna back up the house with it. We'll only kick in the battery if we absolutely need to. Because there's multiple inefficiencies, they're just literally gonna produce less energy over time. We're gonna be able to back up the house for longer. There's really not much of a comparison if you're looking at a single fully loaded battery cabinet to a single power wall. Uh, I think most people accept this. You know, we're twice as powerful. You're getting half the power with a single power wall and you're getting less capacity. With this battery, again, when you combine it with load management, we're gonna be able to back up much more of a home whereas a single power wall is really light spurge and outlets. But I realized that in most cases, we're not being compared to a single power wall, we're being compared to two. 
And in that comparison, yeah, they're giving you similar amounts of power, but because you don't have load management access, you're still backing up either the well pump or the heat pump. You're not gonna really be backing up both of these. So a lot of installers in Tesla Energy themselves, from what I understand, if a homeowner says, I want whole home backup, they go straight to four power walls because they know about the codes that say, you can only, you know, for optional standby systems, you need as much energy storage um, in order to back up all loads in the house as though they're running simultaneously, unless you have load management. That's in the NEC. So a lot of installers to get, to power the same amount of loads, to power the 85 amps I showed you earlier, installers would need to sell home, or homeowners like 35 to $40,000 worth of Tesla Powerwalls. We're going to be a much more cost-effective whole home backup power solution. We also offer 24-7, 365 customer support for our homeowners. You guys are gonna have access to Power Fleet, which is gonna let you proactively monitor your customer sites. And something that's just unique about Generac, again, backup power is what we do. We've got 2 point, almost 2.5, probably by the end of this year, backup power customers in North America, 2.5 million. So we have a storm response team, which is basically like on-call employees who are certified and willing to answer the phone when there's a hurricane coming up the coast or, or a big outage in, in Puerto Rico, for example. We've covered a lot of these specs, but most of my focus has been on Tesla. Um, I shouldn't kick them all the way down. We also have comparisons to LG Chem and Charge as well. We are you know, far and beyond, we're gonna give you more power, more capacity in a single cabinet, more flexibility at a better price. And we're going to give you the ability to do load management. We're going to operate more efficiently. We never shut off the PV array when the grid goes down. There are all of these advantages to working with the PowerCell platform. And I'm hopeful that you guys have gathered that from today's presentation. I do recommend just from a sales perspective that you guys lead with the flagship solar post storage platform. So homeowner says, hey, I want backup power. Most homeowners who say that are already thinking like, I want to power my whole house. So they just expect to. So you, you should give them the thing that's, you should offer them or initially propose the thing that's going to get them as close to that as possible, which would be the flagship system, six battery modules and a cabinet with the power cell ATS, transfer switch. And if they don't have the budget for that, back it off to three or four battery modules, give them essential loads and let them know, hey, if you want to add battery modules to this system in a year or in six months, or you want to put this system in, monitor your, cons live in self-supply mode monitor your consumption for a couple weeks or a couple months and see if this battery capacity would last you for a couple days off grid, go for it. Well, we can come back and add more battery modules if it doesn't. Typical bill of materials guys um, is available here. I can make a screenshot of this available to Aaron uh, and Jessica who can send out a follow up after the presentation. The thing that is consistent across the board here is the inverter, the PV link and the snappers. The SNAP RS is our inline shutdown device. Those click on to the negative whip of each PV module. And then the only thing that varies is with partial home backup power, you can have a battery cabinet and the number of battery modules. With the flagship system, battery cabinet, six battery modules, 200 amp transfer switch, and you could do up to eight SMMs, uh, which I didn't cover, but uh, you could do up to eight of those. I should also mention that coming in uh, at the end of September, we're very early October, we'll be shipping an outdoor rated battery cabinet. Um, but we will be uh, at that time come October also shipping three kilowatt hour Panasonic batteries uh, that have the same thermal operating temperature as they do today. So in some markets, it will be feasible to put those battery cabinets outside. Uh, in some markets, it may still not be. Key takeaways, Generac is a partner. We're gonna help you guys grow your business through you know, supporting you, having supply through distribution like Baywa, you've been great partners to us. And, and just remember guys, look, we're, we're a manufacturer. We don't have an, we don't have an installation arm. Um, I've heard stories of, of homeowners who got a quote for three power walls from an installer for $39,000. They went to Tesla's website to look at the specs and they saw, oh, I could buy this battery for 25,000. I could buy three of these for $25,000 from Tesla. The local installer, the, the local installer, the regional installer didn't get the business because Tesla undercuts you in the market and sells directly to the homeowner. We don't do that guys, we're a partner. We're here to help you guys build your business. A fully integrated solar cool storage platform. We're gonna be easier to install, faster to install. We're gonna be plug and play. We're the most cost effective whole home solar cool storage platform available. And we will always back up the house from the sun.
Remember, we have that buy and try campaign available. So if you are new to PowerSell, register a system before the end of the year. Go to generac.com slash first PowerSell. You'll get a $600 installer rebate and a free one-year PowerPlay clean energy subscription. Aaron and Jessica, back over to you. Thank you guys so much for joining today. We have some time for Q&A. Great. Thanks, Jeff. That was fantastic. And we did have some really, really great questions roll in here. Um, forgive me, I'm on a cell phone I just moved and uh, the internet here is not great. So that was part of the technical difficulties at the beginning. And you may see my hands as I try to flip through some of these questions. Um, so let's see here. The first question that came in from Troy was, are we required to be, uh, to be certified to be able to purchase a Generac storage system? And will this class provide that certification? So you, you did briefly touch on certification at the beginning. Um, this, this class does not um, uh, provide that certification. Uh, can you just quickly reiterate the certification process? No, don't be crazy. You got to get certified. Uh, you can, I'm kidding. You can buy the product without being certified. You can, you can buy product from Baywa today without being certified. Place your purchase order, get certified in the process. But if you want technical support or leads, you're going to want to get certified. So no, it's not required to purchase to answer your question. I'm just being silly, uh, but you should get certified. You're going to have the best experience. Your customer is going to have the best experience. Great. And um, George asks, um, we have a customer with an 8KW solar system and they want a whole home backup with PowerCell. Um, can we back up their AC? How do we get enough KW for a whole home backup? So we touched on um, the the solution here a little bit, but just quickly reiterate for George. Yeah, so uh, as of today, we're not an AC coupled solution. So I think unfortunately, until the end of the year, we are planning to roll out AC, uh, surprise everybody, we're planning to roll out AC coupling by the end of the year. But as of now, having an existing PV array automatically means we're not gonna be a great candidate for this platform. We're very focused on, on the new solar plus storage platforms, but, Here's the deal. If a customer has a three ton AC unit or less and you put a sure start on it, I'm confident that with the biggest battery, you're going to be able to back up that AC unit. If it's a four ton or a five ton, I would not plan on backing up that AC unit. Does that answer the question, Aaron? Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Um, and then can you reiterate when the promotion, when the buy and try promotion runs through? What's, what's the termination date on that? You've got to buy by Friday. Um, I'm just kidding. Uh, it, runs <laughs> the, it, it runns through the end of the year. So you've okay. got to do December 31st. So, you know, if you're, we totally understand. The reason we extended it so far, guys, is because we know if you sell a project today, you might not install it until, geez, at this point, like mid-November or something, right? Yeah. In the worst case scenario. So, yeah, end of the year. Okay. And um, can you quickly touch on whether or not the power cell is recommended for off-grid systems and um, talk about any EV charging capability or functionality um, on that end? Sure. So we are launching, uh, we're launching generator integration in October. You guys will see a big launch on that. Until that point, I'm not recommending our solution for generator, or excuse me, for off-grid applications. Because uh, I really think in order to be a robust off-grid offering, you've got you've to have some sort of like last line of defense uh, gen integration. So ask me again in October. Um, regarding EV charging, no, I mean, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, not a, <clears throat> it's not a coincidence that we've got a 380 volt DC bi-directional bus and, and level two EV chargers are like inherently, I think 380 volts DC. Um, but uh, as of now, we don't have any way of integrating. We, we don't have an integration ongoing with any EV manufacturers to complete that. So as of now, no EV charging. You could put the EV on a sub panel. Um, okay. You know, the, uh, and, and just to be clear, like other EV charging solutions on the market are just like, it's essentially the same thing as putting an EV charger on, on a breaker in the main service panel because you're not charging the battery from the EV directly from DC. Uh, with other solar inverters, you're still charging it from AC. So it's good marketing, but got it. Great. Um, and then can you briefly elaborate on the ATS and its interaction with the generator ATS or what that interaction will look like? Um, and then um, would it be possible to get some one line drawings that clarify whole home versus partial backup? So we did have some drawings um, pop up during the presentation. I think this was asked before that, but. Totally. 
show yeah, those again. So there, yeah, yeah. So, so there are going to be, like everything, there are going to be multiple applications for, for a generator integration. One of them, so for starters, this is your one line, assuming, and I'm sorry, this is just my desktop version. This is your one line for whole home backup without a generator. If you were doing, um, if you were doing whole home backup with, uh, for whole, if you're, excuse me, if you're doing whole home backup with a generator and you wanted that integration, you would need a second ATS. Um, I can actually just very briefly, because I know it'll be useful for you folks. I can, um, I can pull that up very briefly. Again, guys, yeah, this, uh, this is as not- As we're running through it, uh, talk about load management as well. Yeah, so, so those SMMs just install right outside the main service panel and they install in line with the appliance and they communicate on, on frequency drop. So, you know, if, if the inverter can't supply enough power to the house, it'll start to droop in its frequency output and those SMMs immediately will acknowledge that and disconnect the appliance. Um, let me go ahead and share this uh, one line here. This is an example of a one line with a whole house, uh, whole house disconnect switch with a generator. This is what we are aiming towards. But again, this is not launched until October. So any, and candidly through testing, anything could, could change. But if you've got an existing Generac, um, existing Generac transfer switch, you would utilize uh, an additional power cell transfer switch. Um, you'd run basically two wires to the GenSense GenStart on the, on the generator transfer switch. And then you connect the power cell to the power cell transfer switch, but the generator transfer switch would be um, north of um, north of the uh, on the I want to say like north of the power cell transfer switch. There's another uh, there's another example for protected loads, but uh, we should probably hold off until that generator launch to discuss. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. And can you confirm that the that the app you described, the monitoring app, is available on both iPhone and Android, iOS and Android? <laughs> yep, confirmed. Great. Um, there are a couple of questions asking about how the Generac PowerCell solution compares to the, um, you know, Enphase and Sunrun offerings. Um, the oh, Sunrun oh. right, right box and the Enphase and Pin Charge. Um, maybe just briefly touch on some of the high points there. Yeah. So the bright box today is just a storage. It's a solar edge storage inverter with an LG Chem battery. So um, I can address that pretty quickly. <clears throat> you would need two storage inverters and two LG Chem batteries to get the same power output and capacity that you can get from a single power cell inverter in the single fully loaded battery cabinet on our side. We are literally twice as powerful, twice as much capacity with one inverter and one battery cabinet. Um, and again, we're, we're fully integrated solution, whereas you're working with LG Chem and Solar Edge or, or Sunrun is working with LG Chem and Solar Edge. Um, and I think anybody who, a lot of folks who've worked with that platform have had uh, support experiences of, of having to go back and forth between multiple manufacturers. So it's something you'd be able to avoid. Um, in terms of the end phase battery, uh, we don't, I mean, just candidly, I don't think we know a, a whole lot about it, about the experience of working with it. What I can tell you is that, you know, we're going to be, you can get 18 kilowatt hours of storage for roughly the same price that you're going to get. 10 kilowatt hours of end charge storage for it. And we're gonna operate more efficiently and you don't really have restrictions on our system sizes. Like right now, the initial rollout of that application from what I understand has a lot of restrictions around how much solar with how much battery storage. We, we don't have those restrictions. Also guys, just from like 30,000 foot view, our technology is, is, is actually mature for this market because these batteries and the, the Rebus technology has been out there for like three, four years. The end charge battery is just launching now. Um, I'm, you know, I, you could take from you could take from that what you will, but that is still an early stage platform. Um, and in my opinion, it's just it's. I think some homeowners will will work with it, and some installers will as well. But we're going to be again a way more cost effective whole home backup solution by a company that homeowners know and trust. Hi. Um, can you let's see here? Can you briefly repeat the NEC code requirement related to whole home backup? Uh, you know what? Absolutely. If you guys give me, um, if you just give me one second, I can pull that up. Uh, it's for optional standby systems, and I believe that it is 706. And what it requires is that you are providing uh, enough backup power to meet all of the load in the house as though it was running sim simultaneously. Um, 
And as you're looking that up, um, do you know the battery chemistry off the top of your head? Yep, it's NMC, lithium ion. You got another question ready? I'm still looking for Yeah, you. so um, with the older inverters, including those that are um, uh, Pico branded, um, uh, I'm sorry, will the old inverters, including those that are not Generac branded, be capable of controlling the SMMs via a software update, or will those scenarios require a power cell transfer switch? Um, so the SMMs are, are separate from the transfer switch. Like you can install, there's a couple questions here. You can install the SMMs without, a trans without that transfer switch. You can install the SMMs with a sub panel if you wanted to. Um, but my understanding is that you do need at least uh, the initial, uh, at least the first rev of the PowerCell hardware um, to, to integrate with the SMMs. I don't think the PICA inverters have the ability to integrate with those. Okay. And the, um, the NEC, NEC article 702.4B is where optional standby systems are required to be sized to power all of the load that is connected to them. So if you have a 30 amp well pump and a 30 amp water heater and nothing else connected, you are expected to have a backup system that can provide 60 amps of backup power. Okay, mm -hmm. unless you have load management, which is why Generac invented the SMMs uh, five or so years ago. Um, and let's see here from, from Bob, uh, what's the DC to AC ratio on the inverter? It's a great question. So because we're DC coupled, uh, I'll answer this in two part. Uh, and I'm sorry, all my answers are basically two part right now. Um, without a battery, you're going to stick to your like 10 KW on the seven, six. Um, so like 135% or so <clears throat> with a battery, you can oversize the inverter a bit more. I mean, we have systems out there that are like, 15 kilowatts of solar with a 17 kilowatt hour battery. There are very specific cases. That's an edge case. There's specific examples of when that'll make sense. Uh, but I would stick to if you've got 12 or so KW of solar and a power cell 17, you could do that on one inverter as long as the homeowner is cycling that battery daily. Follow me here for a second. If you're adding a 17 kilowatt hour battery that could be charged every single day, and you size your PV systems for like, uh, for like five sun hours, factor that you could do like an extra three kilowatts of solar on your PV array to factor in for charging that battery every single day. So if you were gonna sell a, an, an 8KW PV array to cover a homeowner's load on, or cover their consumption on, a, on the 7.6, and now they're saying they want the 17 kilowatt hour battery, you could factor in another three KW of PV or so, three, three and a half, maybe four KW of PV, depending on where you are, to, to, to recharge that battery on a daily basis. Does that make sense? If you have a smaller battery, less additional solar, but if you have the fully loaded battery, factor in like an extra three KW on that inverter. That's fantastic. Sure. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, that does clarify. Okay, so we did have additional questions. If you don't mind, Jeff, as we're, as we're closing the webinar out, uh, go ahead and put your contact information back up on the screen there. Um, we really appreciate everyone joining us today to learn more about selling the Generac power cell solution to win residential solar and storage deals. We really appreciate everyone joining us today and participating with some great questions. Hope everyone learned a lot about Generac and the power cell solution and look forward to working with you all as you go through your first installations of the product. Aaron, Jessica, thank you so much for hosting, guys. Uh, Baywall has been an awesome partner to us, and you guys have, have found a, a good distributor in them. So thank you, guys. Mm -hmm.